turn. You can lie, you can lurk. Shelly Roy, it's your turn. Thank you for tuning in to The Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and we have an amazing show for you guys tonight. I pray that you guys are continuing to stay safe and sanitized. I pray that you guys are having a great week so far. Before we kick off the show, I always like to start with thanking our sponsors. The Shelly Roy Show is sponsored by Built on Survival Skills Apparel. We're also sponsored by Liquid Lipo, where you could lose up to a pound a day. I also want to thank my makeup artist, Amber Singletary, and my photographer, Stephen Tucker. So you guys stay tuned. Don't go anywhere because up next, we have Mr. Duck Lasseter, Keisha from Mad Print Shop, and Mr. Faith Melante. Up next, after the break. <laughs> Shine like this in a matter of time I spent on some locked up shit in the back of the paddy wagon, cuffs locked on wrist. See my dreams unfold, nightmares come true. It was time to marry the game, and I said, Yeah, I do. If you want it, you gotta see it with a clear eye view. Got shorty, she try and bless me like I said, I chew. Like a nigga sneeze, nigga, please for them trick and squeeze. I'm getting cream. Never let them hoes get in between of what we started. Little nigga, but I'm lying hearted. They love me when I was stuck in their Hate it when I departed, I go and get it regardless Draw it like I'm an artist, no crawling Went straight to walking with foreigns in my garages Or foreign bitches menaging Fucking sucking and swallowing anything for a dollar They tell me get him, I got him I did it without an album I did shit with Mariah Little nigga, I'm on fire Icy as a hockey ring, Philly nigga, I'm flyer When I bought the Rolls Royce, they thought it was Leaf Then I bought that new... Hey, what's up? It's your boy Faith Melante, better known as Tyson from A Rich Christmas, Avery from Big 50, and famously known as Nurse Brian from the hit TV show Double Cross. You can find out more about me this Wednesday, February the 16th at 8 p.m. on The Shelly Roy Show. That's right, people. Tune in each and every Wednesday, The Shelly Roy Show, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. We out here, baby. DC, DMV. We made it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Welcome back to the Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and my first guest is here to promote his book, Cruddy Buddy. You guys help me welcome Mr. Duck Lasseter. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thank welcome, having welcome, me. welcome. Thank you I want to jump ahead, but I won't. So tell everybody who Duck Lasseter is and what's your story. Um, Duck Lasseter is just the young 
black boy from Southeast Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, went through some trials and tribulations in my youth and try to turn that into something positive. That ain't no glory to my story. I love it. Where in Southeast D.C. did you grow up? Um, Southeast Washington, Bury Farm. Okay. Park Lane. All right. Between, back and forth between both places like that. I love it. So, I love yeah. how you flipped it and turned it into something positive. So we'll get a little bit more into that. So tell me about Cruddy Buddy. What is it about? Tell me about so, your book. So um, Cruddy Buddy is about a young African-American male growing up in the projects mm. um, that wanted more for itself than have to be waiting for his parents. And it's like the traditional uh, urban story in the you know, um, DC hoods mm -hmm. or hoods all across the world. Like, you know, we don't want to listen to our parents. So the first thing we do, come off the porch and do the things that we want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would you characterize this book as? Is it fiction or nonfiction? It's not neither. Okay. I don't characterize it, cruddy buddy, as fiction or nonfiction. It's okay. faction. Okay. So all right, y'all heard that's that. How it's I, faction. That's how I um, classify my book. Okay. Faction. So it's gonna be whatever you feel it's gonna be. That's what it's gonna be. Like you might can relate to some people, some things, uh, some situations. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, I know, I remember that, or I was at that, or. So it's faction. Okay. So faction meaning the majority of it is true, is based on real life experiences or that's for you to read it and to read it to decide. Okay. If I tell you that, then I give up the story. Not always. Yeah. No. Well Okay. Faction. Well, some truth, some false. Okay. And so you gotta find a median in the but middle. But relatable. And right. And okay. so some of it to some people it'd be false to some people I remember that mm -hmm. and action. okay so through your upbringing and life experiences mm -hmm. when did you decide or what made you want to become a writer okay so my upbringing I come from a two parent household my mother and my father they still together right now today 47 years later oh that's a blessing um I wasn't always the best son but mm -hmm. I had the best teachings. I chose my own path. Mm -hmm. So my path led me to go to prison. Um, mm. You know, I was in prison for 20 years. So I've done 20 straight years. I've been home now almost 11 years. So oh, during amen. my nice incarceration, um, I read so many books, urban books yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. And it wasn't really relatable or realistic. Mm. So I was like, man, I could do that because in school, I always enjoyed writing English, literature, art, stuff like that. So it started out, <clears throat> excuse me, it started out as just something to do. Okay. And so um, I let a couple of people read a book, you know, while I was in the joint, they loved it. So, so you actually began writing while you were incarcerated? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So um, when I came home, I let a friend of mine read Cruddy Buddy Part One. She loved it. Mm. Then I let her read the other ones. And, you know, it was like, man, you leaving a bunch of money on the table. So um, she helped me. And here we go. Here we go. So on the I show, love the that. You, show. Absolutely. This is the place to be. You made it to the white chair. I made it to the white chair. <laughs> you made it to the white chair. So you said something. You said you let a friend of yours read this and the other. So would you consider this a novel? And are there well, more Cruddy Buddies to come? Yes, ma'am. It's okay. a trilogy. This trilogy. Cruddy okay. Buddy, the come up, is the first installment of a trilogy. Okay. So um, then I got Cruddy Buddy Against the Grain coming behind that one and I got the grand finale coming behind that one. So it's... I can't wait. I absolutely love it. So I know you said you started your process of beginning to write while you were incarcerated. So how long would you say it took you to actually write the book? The first book or all three of them combined? We'll start with the first and then it we can talk about It took me probably like, I think I wrote that book 
in like two months. Oh, that's good. Yeah, two months, yeah. just writing down, writing down with a pencil, you know, writing mm -hmm. on the, the legal yellow notepads. Yeah. And just writing, writing, writing. And then I typed it. Okay. So, you know, I passed it around. And everybody liked it. And so I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So you did most of the heavy lifting. I, I absolutely most of the heavy love lifting. that. So then, Cruddy Buddy 2, the second one, how long did you take to write that one? About the same. It's okay. about the same because some of what I didn't put in the first one, I just held on to it mm -hmm. and, you know, made it a spinoff for the second one. That mm -hmm. way, you know, it was less, a little less work had to be done. That's good. Really <clears throat> interesting. Um, the other question I was going to ask you was, I know you said the book was relatable, mm -hmm. but what do you feel you want your readers to take away from the book? Um... <clears throat> What do I want my readers to take away from mm -hmm. the book? I know you said it's relatable. As you read it, as people read it, they can see themselves in the story, maybe identify with certain things. But what do you want people to walk away from reading your book? What do you want them to get from the book? Well, I want, I want, I want the youth first. Mm -hmm. If the youth get their hands on the book, let them see that. You know what I'm saying? Because the guy, the the main character in the book, is pretty much like. One of them. And so the choices that he made led him to where he ended up. Okay. Which is, that's for the youth. Yeah. As for the um, adults, you know, I just want, want everybody to take, like, walk away, like, pass it on. Like, man, yeah, that's a good book. Kept me laughing, mm -hmm. um, you know, and just, it was just enjoy to read. Yeah, relatable for sure. Definitely relatable. Um, you spoke about, one of the main characters. How many characters are in your book? It's a variety of characters. Um, are they synonyms or no, real they, life characters? Or they, they, I mean, because the book is a, is a, actually a throwback book. Okay. Right. Um, but the main character, his name is Elliot um, Lancaster, and uh, Melody is his girlfriend. Spider is his partner. Okay. Um, so it's, it, you know, it's, you might, might even be in there. Okay. I <laughs> no, might see I'm myself in there. No, I get it. I get it. Not, not in this one. Yeah. But you come. You come. Okay. Okay. I'm coming. This whole okay. little. No, I get it. White chair moment is going to be, you'll read about it. I absolutely love it. Um, so while you were writing, I know you were incarcerated. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when I talk to people about writing books, they ask me, what do I recommend? I always tell people. Be consistent, carve out time, whether it's in the morning, if you're, some people are more productive in the morning, yeah. some people are more productive in the evening. So what would you say was your writing style and when did you take <clears throat> time to write? To piggyback on what you said, right? Because um, mm -hmm. people have reached out to me and asked mm -hmm. me and I always tell them, like you said, um, stay consistent. Mm -hmm. Always write. That's why I end up wearing glasses. I used to write in the dock with just the little light from outside coming through the window, yeah. mm. you know. So that, I, I would just always tell them, don't never stop writing. If you think about it, write it down. You could come back to it later. And, and as an artist, you could put your own twist on whatever it is mm -hmm. and just never stop writing. Keep writing, keep writing. Yeah. You know, um, there are times where you have writer's block and then Absolutely. when you try to force um, you try to force your story mm -hmm. it, and it don't come off right. So when you get back to it, then you see that I swear I was, I was right there at that moment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but don't never stop writing. Yeah, no, that's stop true. Writing. That's the same advice I give is too. Key. Yeah, because I think people get hung up in the layout, the format. But like you said, if you just write it, mm -hmm. just get it all out, just, then you can worry about the formatting. The Later. later. The format come later because where I may be a great storyteller, mm -hmm. but I don't know how to, or I'm not well versed into formatting it. So, but that's what you do. Right. So, hey, Shelly, I got this story. Can you help me? And you say, well, okay, well, this is what you need to do, you know, um, and you could help me build, paint a better picture mm -hmm. for the story that I'm telling. Yeah. So no, that makes sense yeah. for sure. So I know you originally said the book was based on faction. Mm -hmm. So in addition to that, 
Like, where did most of the ideas come from? Like, how did you arrive at your ideas for the book? Just all of them. Just laying, laying, laying in the bed in my cell, thinking. Hmm. Just like it all started because the thought is the cause of it all. So none of that wouldn't be possible if I didn't think it first. So I just transferred my thoughts in my head and put it on paper. I love that. Just made yeah. it like that. Being creative, you definitely have to put it to paper for well, sure. That's my hand. So not meaning to put you on the spot, but <laughs> why don't you read me like a paragraph or two? I don't know how I read. Psych, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> Like <laughs> I would be like, that's a terrible thing. Like, yeah, that's terrible. You like, have a trilogy. Yeah, like what, whatever you feel your favorite part is. Like you said, your favorite character is the main character. Who? What's the name of your main character? L. Okay. Okay. Read something from L. Elliot Lancaster, or L, as he was often called, has seen a lot through his fourteen-year-old eyes. Growing up in the Burry Farm dwellings of Southeast Washington D.C., he witnessed the ever-growing popularity of the crap epidemic and observed mm. from the sidelines how some of the most well-respected hood figures was getting money and how some of the prettiest women sold their precious bodies and anything they could get their hands on just for a hit of the, wow. the crack pipe. I insert that right there. Yeah. Um, along with the crack epidemic and the popularity, PCP, which is also called Love Boat, there were several youthful hood-related street crews and although young L bared witness to the camaraderie of those crews, he had he held other aspirations for himself. Through attentive eyes, L watched how the hustlers and money getters stayed dressed to impress in the latest fashions and drove some of the most popular cars the city had seen. He saw the respect they demanded and how they stayed in the company of some of the most beautiful women the city had to offer. Mm. And that is what he wanted for himself. There were two things holding the five eight. 165-pound, brown-skinned, baby-faced youngster back from pursuing his street dreams. And they went by the names of Skinny Pimp and Big Mama, <laughs> who both were working citizens and every day and worked hard every day to provide for their two offspring with food, clothing, and shelter and the other necessities of life. That's deep. Very deep, don't you think, guys? That's going to be an interesting read. So, I know this is one of your favorite main characters, but how much of that can you identify with L? I think all of us can identify with what you just read. Witnessing that, if not being closely identify, impacted by it. Yeah. I can identify with L 100%. Yeah. You sound like L. <laughs> you sound like everybody else. <laughs> sound like you was describing yourself. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to say that. I understand. I, you know, I understand. Well, I can't wait to, wait to read it. I can't wait for you to read I it. I cannot wait to read it. So what do you do in your spare time when you're not writing? Since you're good at writing and you love writing. <clears throat> well, when I'm not writing, I'm also, um, I'm a barber. Okay. So, you know, uh, I wear many hats. I'm a barber. Um, we I have also to. work as a um I'm in mental health, so I deal with the mentally challenged. Mm, um, that's important. Yeah, somewhat like a CSW. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. And that's, that's just basically what I do. I go to work, work two jobs, home, and do you it all over to. again. We have to be multifaceted. We're multiple hats. So I love that. That's yeah. serious, the mental health. Like, how does that impact you, just dealing with the day-to-day trials and tribulations with it because mental health is serious um so mental health is serious mm -hmm. and it's so overlooked in our community today um so i see it firsthand but fortunately for me mm -hmm. the guys that i work with are independent okay so they are more so independent living and i'm just basically um i oversee them that's okay you know gotcha the, Behind the scenes of the mental health um, situation, I'm not really not well versed okay. on that part to speak on it. Okay, but makes sense. Understand. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, before we close out, tell mm -hmm. everybody what your social media handles are and where they can buy your book, Pretty Buddy. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Duck Lassiter. That's on Facebook. Um, on Instagram, I think is. 
duck sauce of Virgo. I'm a Virgo. Okay. So, and the book could be purchased on Amazon. I have a softback version on Amazon. Also, I have a Kindle version okay. on Amazon as well. Um, I'm in the process now of um, making it go to audio book. Because a great. couple of people had suggested that. It's good to have So options. that was something that I was already thinking about. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's That's really good. That's it. Well, congratulations. And thank you so much for taking thank the you. time. Thank you for having me. To talk to us about your book. Yeah, thank you for having me. You guys stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Do you or anyone you know have a business or a brand you want to promote? Would you like to be a guest or be a part of our studio audience? If so, contact us at theshellyroyshow at gmail.com or contact us on Instagram at theshellyroyshow. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Hey, I'm your girl Keisha, the owner of Mad Print Shop, where we serve the DMV with all your prints and needs. Mad Print Shop is located at 4407 Southern Avenue in Capitol Heights, Maryland. Well, today I'm here to ask you guys to follow my girl, Shelly Roy, at the underscore Shelly Roy Show. You can catch me this Wednesday, February the 16th at 8 p.m. on the Shelly Roy Show. You don't want to miss it. Hello, I'm Keisha, the owner of Mad Print Shop. At the Mad Print Shop, we do custom printing, logos, rest in peace shirts, banners, backdrops, just about whatever you need printed. Mad Print Shop is located at 4407 Southern Avenue in Capitol Heights, Maryland. <laughs> Welcome back to the Shelly Roy Show. My next guest is CEO and founder of Mad Print Shop. You guys help me welcome Miss Keisha. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. How you are you? You look so pretty. I'm good. Thank you. You always look pretty. I'm good. Thank you so, so much. Yes. So, so much. So, we got so, so much to talk about. Yes. So, tell everybody who Keisha is and what's your story. Well, my name is Keisha. I'm the owner of the Mad Print Shop. I started Mad Print Shop in 2017. Okay, congratulations. After losing all my hours at work. <laughs> Listen, that is something that will catapult you forward yes, to get you I, going. And um, one of my girlfriends had lost her son. Mm, and okay. I had all this heat press stuff in my house. And I wanted it out. And so I, the Mad Print Shop is actually named after my kids. Um, Marnie, Aaliyah, Delante. So that's how I came Boom. up with my I sure. love it. <laughs> See, you beat me to it. You answered my question. I love that. So yeah. Mad Print Shop is named after your kids. One more time. Um, Marnie, uh -huh. Aaliyah, uh -huh. and Delante. I love that. Yeah. Absolutely love that. So are they an intricate part of the business? Do they help you with the business? Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say girl? It started no? from them because I bought all the equipment because as they was coming up, they um, start losing friends. A lot of people mm, passed yeah. away. So I was like, we could do these shirts ourselves and we could do this ourselves. So mm. that's so how it started. So it started from that. 
mm-hmm. in your home yeah. because of your kids losing friends and you guys were trying to memorialize the friends. So it just started like as a home-based business. Yes. I absolutely love that. Unfortunately, it's a need for it. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so what other services do you provide? Because when I hear print, it's so many different levels and variations to print. So tell everybody what services you provide in detail. Okay. So we started off printing just T-shirts. Mm-hmm. And um, because I didn't know nothing else about no other printing but T-shirts. But as we grew, now we print everything. Like banners, flyers, backdrop, business cards. Um, That's good to know. We can wrap cars. Really? Billboards. Y'all hear that, guys? Banners. Wrap cars. Wrap your car. Put your logo on. That's what I'm talking about. Give it to us all because we're (laughs) going to need it. We can do it all. Whatever you need. I, I actually bought something nice for you, too. Oh, you I did? I thought I was just coming for the chat. I left it right over there. That's okay. Thank <laughs> so, you, So um, I have something nice for you. I really um, wanted to bring it and show it so okay. that you can. Um... Can we see what she bought, Justin? Please. We can see this amazing work. Girl. Oh. So I thought that this was a nice, nice picture of you. Wow. So, okay. Okay. So, Y'all see that? That's my twin right there. <laughs> Our Keisha, print quality that is, beautiful. is so good. I, I Stan, actually you see that? Um, laminated you see that? it for you. And guess what? It's actually on a sticker, so you can lay Peel it, it off. anywhere you want to. And because it's laminated, you don't have to even worry about not being able to lay it. You, you better show off. You better show off. You can put it anywhere, and I wanted you to have this so you can see our quality. This is beautiful. And when you beautiful. tell people about my print shop. We telling them right now. You guys make sure you support this black-owned business, but look at the quality of the work. This is so beautiful. Thank you. So, I mean, wow. we can print it large as you want. UBM, you want. y'all hear that? This quality work right here. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, so much. <laughs> Gee, I can't stop looking at it. Wow. You had so many pictures, I couldn't decide which one to choose Listen, from. You take some really nice pictures. I don't envy you on that, so I'm glad you picked out <laughs> something, because, yeah, I'm the selfie queen, unfortunately. Yes. I was like, you got so many. Thank you. That was you. very nice. So that was very I'm nice you of like you. It. A very kind, amazing gesture. I really Thank appreciate you. that. So with so many of the amazing services that you provide, what would you say is Mad Print Shop's specialty? I would say helping people grow their own print or their clothing line. Okay. Give me an example. Okay. So if you want to come and start your Shelly Rory um, clothing line and you want to get your logo printed on some sweatsuits. So you do logos too? We don't make the logos, but we print on them. Okay. Gotcha. So if you wanted to get your logo um, printed on your sweatsuit, hoodies, whatever, like wrap on your car... We could um, print your logos. I like helping people build their own clothing line. I like that. So that's where it's at. And I want to start doing classes so that people could do it in their own home. Absolutely. And they don't have to come to, like, because, you know, we're growing. And I don't want to say we're growing out of T-shirts. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like you are, though. Yeah, yeah. So, but I would like to help people be able to start their own clothing line, make their own money at home, and teach them how to do the turnaround and flip the money and things like that. It's needed. It really is. Mm -hmm. And then I love the idea about the classes because you need to be taught the right way. Oftentimes you see people do something and you say, oh my God, that looks so easy. But when in reality it's not. Because I actually think I tried to do like my own little heat. (laughs) Yes. I started by myself because of course my kids knew. And I had... um, started in, a, um, in a, just a building in Marlow Heights Shopping Center. Okay. And I didn't know the difference between, I just thought that you had to use a piece of print paper and just put the That's image on thought. the shirt. So I didn't know the difference between the vinyls. I was putting wallpaper on people's shirts. It's so but I had to, to learn. Le- I had to learn and I refused to give up on it. And that's good. So that's good. I just pushed. I love the drive. I ain't know nothing. 
that's okay. <laughs> a lot of us are self -taught. Now and I can teach you. And some people who was trying to teach me, I could help them. Because mm -hmm. when I took it in, I just took it all. Took it all in. I absolutely love that. A lot of us are self-taught. So I appreciate mm -hmm. that. So with regards to like the printing and stuff like that, do you guys provide the merch, like the actual merchandise itself? Or how does that work? Yes, we keep basic um, hoodies, T-shirts, sweatsuits, merchandise. And we always have our stuff blank. So people are always like, why y'all don't have y'all logo? Um, Mad Print is not a clothing line. I never started a clothing line. It's just That's a good was point. a print shop. Print shop. So I, ne I leave everything blank to give people the option to put whatever they want mm -hmm. on our stuff. But yes, we do have a lot of merch. No, that's a Things good point. Things you could choose from. So from a promotion perspective, since most of all of your canvases are blank, you do, like for some of the customers you service, you mm -hmm. keep like demos of those though, right? To give, you know, customers a perspective of yeah, what yeah. things could possibly what they look could like. Get. Yeah. Yes. I used to put it all on my um, social media page. And then, you know, um, this game is like a war. On you don't shirts. Have to tell me. <laughs> so then you find people like if I was to promote that I'm doing Shelly Roy um, clothing, then it's other people who are gonna come and attack you and try to steal your business from me because I no, think I might be the only female happen. that runs the print shop. And that's the, what I'm most the, impressed about. The DMV you are because that I know I'm of. in competition with all men. Everybody I know, like the men dominate this printing game yeah. because they know it. But Well, I love the fact that you are making your stamp. You are making yes. your mark. That <laughs> is impressive for sure. Thank you. So with that being said, what would you say is most unique about Mad Print Shop? I know there's a lot of competition out there, but what do you feel makes you stand out from the rest? I think we're creative. Okay. I think that we stand out because we for the people too. We not mm -hmm. out here trying to rake every dollar in. Yeah. Like every most people come to us be like, Oh, we just went down the street and they tried to charge us a hundred dollars, you know, like Wow. Um, I think that we we give a lot, like we help people a lot. Our place is real comfortable and mm -hmm. you know, we got a lot to give and we helpful to Everybody, like, when you come in Mad Print Shop, the energy is good. Good vibes only. Well, listen, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to Mad Print Shop. We can't wait From to have now you. On, <laughs> like, Raw have been telling me so much about you guys, but yes. I am definitely sold, for sure. I really appreciate her, too. You know? Absolutely. We support one another. You have to. You have All to. All the way down to the end. So. Absolutely. Yes. So, so champagne like you... me, please. Like, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> me, please. <laughs> yes. But I absolutely I'm sorry, love it. It's, it's a running. celebration for sure. Yes. Um, no, but that's, that's so necessary. I appreciate it. I absolutely love it. So we know that there's always ups and downs and struggles as entrepreneurs, but what would you say is the most difficult part about being a black owned business? Um, trying to think that your family mm. and your friends going to so be boy. there for you. Mm. Um, I'm sorry, I ain't even really crying. My eyes just That's don't okay. know what's going on. That's okay. But I think it's difficult, like looking for that support, you know, and from people who you think like, I would have done everything for them. I don't believe they don't come in, you know, like support me with this and that. I'm kind of over it now because I've been doing it for a while. Oh, wow. But yeah. that's the hardest part that you have to get over, just wanting people to be there for you, logging on to watch me tonight at the Shelly Roy yes. show. Just a little support. It don't even yes. about the dollar figure. Mm -hmm. Just having support from. And it seemed like when you, when you do good, them people that you expect to be by your side, they not dead. You know, no, it's not. like, are you mad because I'm doing good now? Yes. You know? Maybe they want to do it and they don't have the confidence or the stick or to the it. Or the pride to just push. Or come and help you out, you know? Like, yeah. 
need some help with your shop? You want your phone to share? Like, yeah, nothing. No, that's so. deep. I can definitely relate. And I'm glad that you push through it because once you get through that, yeah, right. because the thing about it is, it's your dream, it's your vision. Right. So most times people aren't going to buy into it because it's not their vision. Right. So they're not going to get it. So once you get past that and the push comes from a place of belief, even if you have one customer, so for me, I look forward to the people that I don't know. Them the best people. Those are the ones that are gonna support them you. Them are the best people. Like I have customers that turned into family. Like, oh, I'm so this person come every day, they come every week, they send wow. their friends. Like I love it. It's some people that you can't you can't like ain't nothing you can say. Like they just there. And they just want that's how people wear mad print shop because, like mm. I said, we don't have a clothing line. They just want to wear. They just want to support us. Just want to. That's beautiful. Because we good people, you know. I love that. We, we good to people. I love the customer service. So, is yes. it just you? Like, what is your support system? Oh well, it's me, my shop. husband. Okay. Oh, my kids support me if I get on that phone. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> come down here and help me. Okay. You know, like my son, he came today. He and I. And our audience, so <laughs> they support hey, me. Hey, son, if... raise your hand. Hi, <laughs> I love it. We yeah, they the support, support me if I kids. if I need them. Yeah. They they be here for me. So yeah, that and you know it's hard to keep real good help when you want to do a real good job. Mm -hmm. Nobody want to listen to. Nobody wants to listen, and nobody wants to work. They want to do it themselves. No, because yeah. when they see heat press, they think all they supposed to do is heat press. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just want to press the shirt. Like I just want going. It's a whole lot more to it with them images, getting people logo right, the size, and it's not just about. But yes. when people see that, they think that's all they have to do. So. Oh, I can imagine. So describe to me, I know you said you originally started out of your home because mm -hmm. of you know your kids losing friends and things of that nature. Describe to me your first moment, your first customer in the storefront. In the storefront. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I can't even really describe that in the storefront because me and Ra, like when we, when, when I was opening up that store, it was like the customers was, we was hanging out and everybody would just like try to su support. Mm -hmm. But my, my very first customer, when I very first started, I would never, ever, ever forget the lady I was telling you mm -hmm. who uh, worked um, with me and she lost her son. Um, but in the storefront, I was already probably like a little established before I got in there. Gotcha. So it's like my my um, clients came with me to the storefront. Right, they grew with you. Right. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. So based on your journey and being a business owner for some time now, what would you say are some of your success habits? Um. I think building my clients, being professional, um, just staying out the way. Yeah. Just creating, just knowing what you want. You got to stay focused. I would tell people that, you know, just stay focused on what That's you want to do. And don't, don't listen to everything you hear. You have to really like get out there um internet and google stuff on your own right. to make it so i think i'm a success story because me myself raised up in southeast Amen. washington too you know coming no, out good advice of where i come from so good um, advice good advice definitely a success story <laughs> i love that yes you are so tell everybody what your social media handles are and where they can find the mad print shop Okay, so um, we on Instagram at Shop Mad Print Shop. You can find us there. We do have a Facebook page that I don't. <laughs> so we got Mad Print Shop on Facebook also, but we located in Capitol Heights, Maryland, forty four zero seven Southern Avenue. Come and check us out. Yes, you guys go check out Mad Print Shop all your printing needs and accessories. So you guys stay tuned. We're gonna to go to a quick break and we'll be right back.
Do you or anyone you know have a business or a brand you want to promote? Would you like to be a guest or be a part of our studio audience? If so, contact us at the Shelly Roy Show at gmail.com or contact us on Instagram at the Shelly Roy Show. Can't wait to hear from you guys. What do you do? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. We help bring kids back home. You guys are heroes, but you're also partners in crime. Look at you, a little thug with a heart. Amazing, amazing. Life is so amazing. You and your sister, I need your help. My daughter is missing. <laughs> we need to find her. If I help you, I'm going to get my information by any means possible. Here we go. Let the police handle the missing kids. The police can't do what Eric and I do. I'm going to take everything that she took from me. I know crazy when I see it. Welcome. They're going to auction my daughter off? <laughs> this place is giving me 50 shades. Your time is up. This ain't over. Still doing the hero stuff. I never stopped. Thank you guys. Welcome back to the Shelly Roy Show. My next guest is here to promote his new TV show called Double Cross. You guys help me welcome Mr. Faith Malante himself. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, the boy is grateful. I love it. I love it. Listen, okay, I'm going to try to stay on track. Okay. 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 All right. So tell us who Faith Malante is and what's your story? Yes. Faith Malante. So um, I am from D.C. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm from here. And um, I started out acting when I was in high school. Okay. Uh, the crazy thing is, it's a funny story because I was the young like football, stories. you know, the young football guy who um, didn't believe that the arts was for me. Mm. Um, but I did go to a fine art school okay. and Bishop school McNamara High School. There you go. And um, I'm a proud alumni of that fine arts program because there you go. You better it speak, led me baby. to who I am today, you know. Um, and so I, I did that program. I had to do it for two years um, to mm -hmm. graduate. So as a student athlete, of course, I had to make sure that I graduated. Absolutely. So I, I went and got into the program and I started out as... Um, a drummer and dancer in one of the plays that they were doing. We were doing William Shakespeare and Macbeth. Yeah. And um, as we were doing the rehearsal process, um, I, I was always, I always had personality and I always yes, um, you did. <laughs> knew how to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was uh, a class, like in, in my class clown moment at that time. Mm -hmm. And I started kind of like, you know, making a mockery of uh, what was going on as far as acting and stuff like that. Because... Again, I was I was I was in high school, right, in my developmental stage. So it wasn't it wasn't the cool thing, you know. It wasn't what it wasn't the football right, jock, mm -hmm. you know, that I was. And so, um, anywho, but re in reality, that was something I really wanted to do. Wanted you know to how do. you you make fun of stuff that you know that you yeah. really try to suppress. So anywho, um, I ended up getting discovered from the teacher during that time, and wow. he, him him realizing like. You know, okay, yeah, you're joking around and, you, you know, you don't take this serious, you. but yeah. I see something in you and I want to pour into you. Um, so he made me that. the understudy for Macbeth. And I started out as the understudy. I worked my butt off um, countless hours after school and stuff like that. And I ended up getting the lead role um, and becoming a star. And so um, the end of the year, I ended up winning the most outstanding fine arts performance award. And there was people in the program who were in the program for four years when I again wow. did this for two years, but you're so, a natural though. Well, it was yeah. it, it was that was a wake up call, you mm -hmm. know. That was a wake up call to to, and that was the the moment of confidence to like let me know, like mm. you know what, let me really. Somebody took the, this community took the time yeah. to pour into me, and um, I, and that's really what I want to do. So I pursued it, and I went on to Atlanta, um, got a theater foundation, more of a theater foundation there, mm -hmm. and then, um, got my graduate, um, excuse me, undergraduate degree. Mm -hmm. Then I got my. I went and took my talents to LA from I Atlanta. I love that. Um, I Everybody went to go. ain't able. That is so amazing. Well, so let's take a step back for a second. So 
you're definitely a natural. I know you started acting by way of the plays at school. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about that process once you discovered like your niche and you felt like, okay, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Like, what did that look like? Did you have to go to school? Did yes. you have to get a coach? Like, yes. what did that look like? All of, all of those things. Um, that definitely, education is key. Amen. You know, and, and I'm, I'm a firm believer mm. in being the very best version of myself that I can be in anything that I do, period. Mm. That's just who I am. And so because of that, um, you know, I, I, I felt that I had a lack of theater knowledge and um, film knowledge. So I went and pursued that. Mm. And I, I got the education that I needed to make myself more knowledgeable so that I can be the best version of myself. Of you know, I, I, I knew that there was a skill set in me. I knew that I had passion. I knew, you know, all of the other things mm -hmm. that can come into the makeup of uh, what people view as mm -hmm. a rising star. Yeah. Just um, needed a little bit of coaching to but, help bring that talent yeah. out. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And so, in, in classes, because because classes, I'm a, I told you I'm a sports guy, so I always relate things to sports. If you're not, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But you do know that practice makes perfect. Even Absolutely. if you're not a sports person, you, you've heard that before in school. Repetition. You know, yeah. repetition. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the class is practice. Mm -hmm. That The rehearsals is, is practice, you know. So, I, I was very big on putting the time in to me developing this this skill set that people saw in me. Mm. Um, I want to pause for one second. I am so impressed. Try not to get emotional, but can I just thank his parents who are in the audience? You guys have done an amazing job with him. Like the way you speak, like I'm so, so proud. Thank you. you guys did an amazing job. Yeah, my mom, but my I'm mom not stays surprised. on me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not surprised. I'm so not surprised. So talk to me about the new TV show. Yes. Double Cross. Double Cross, yes. Um, Double Cross is an amazing show. It's about um, two fraternal twins who become vigilantes to save little girls from sex trafficking. Mm. Um, the writer, director... Uh, creator, executive producer. Um, her name is Crystal Gibson. Um, she's from here as well. Awesome. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, so gotcha. it, that that was a, a great thing, you know, to be um, on a project from somebody who's uh, also a native. Local. Um, and so, so, how did you land that role? Well, I, the crazy thing is, I, I did an audition locally here, okay. and um, they would they would it was like the DC Broadway, and they were um, casting for film shows, television shows. Um, a bunch of different things. Um, gotcha. Um, okay. um, theater productions. Mm -hmm. And so long story short, I, I, I went to that audition. Um, I nailed it from there. Um, wow. And, and, and from there, it just, it, 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 it took off. Yeah. Um, I also, I, I did have someone who uh, was on the production side who uh, was able to help me out a little bit, but they couldn't, They as far as putting me in front of the then put me in the audition room, put me right. in front of the right people. Mm -hmm. sure. um, you know, so so that, that was, always helps. Yes, yes, Tasha Coates. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> um, and so she was able to to give me that opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a formula of success that I live by: preparation, opportunity, success. Amen. And so I was prepared. She afforded me the opportunity. opportunity. And when I went it. in that room, it was it you was nailed it. it was over with. And I love it. That's what happened. Absolutely love it. So the TV show is about sex trafficking. Yes. You play Nurse Brian. Yes. Talk to me about your role. Okay. So, um, yes, it's about uh, two twins who become vigilantes to save mm -hmm. girls from sex trafficking. Um, however, I'm not one of the ones who's doing the sex trafficking. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually, in, Nurse Brian mm -hmm. is um, a, he he was kidnapped and sold into sex trafficking. Oh wow. um, That's that's his character's background. Um, and so, so he would never do something like that. Uh, however, Nurse Brian is a character. Uh, <laughs> he is the unpredictable, amusing guy who will make you annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> so did you feel like it was hard to play that role? Yes. That character? Yes. Why? Um, because, so when I originally got the script, the, the, the excuse me, not the script, but the audition mm -hmm. scene, the audition scene was more of a charming I'm trying to get the girl um, seen, you know, a little bit nerdish in a, in a way, but because of his shyness of trying to come out the shell and actually 
um, successfully get the girl for his for his deeper motives, because mm -hmm. um, he always has an underlying motive, motive mm -hmm. and intention. Um, everything is very uh, planned out and meticulous. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, I, 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 I thought that it was going to be this charming guy who was going to eventually win the girl over. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, sign me up for the role. I'm ready. I sent over the script, and I was able to read the whole thing. And when I read the whole thing, I said, uh -oh. I don't know if I want to be viewed as that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, on television, and and you know, and if you're a fan of the show, the blackmail, and some of the other stuff that goes on, you you know, Nurse Brian. You know, I'm he's the character that everybody loves to hate. Mm. Um, you know, so I didn't know if I wanted to be seen in television in that way. in a, in a mm -hmm. star starring in this character in this role mm -hmm. that way. Yeah, you know, especially with it being so far from who I am. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. No, I so, absolutely love that. Yeah. So talk to me about the lines. Like, I think I was talking to someone else who is in acting and mm. they said something along the lines. If if you're good with like remembering things mm -hmm. like, would you say is that easy? Like, is that your process? Like when you got your first script, your mm -hmm. first line, like mm -hmm. what was that process? Um. So, well. I've been doing this for 11 years now. I'm a little more seasoned than I yeah. was as a rookie. Yeah. So as a rookie, um, I, I was that actor who, and this is also advice for other actors, but mm -hmm. I was that actor who was like, oh, I've got to have the lines memorized. i got to make sure I'm on top of everything and, and, and you do. Um, but it's, it's deeper than the lines mm -hmm. because that's just surface level, right? Yeah. And you got to go beneath that in mm -hmm. order to really bring it to life. Play the character. Make it believable. Mm -hmm. Make it... Um, what is meant to be. So where do you go to do that? Make it believable. Um, well, what space do you go in to make it believable? Um, I, I, I go into just a, a sacred space, a mm. space where I can get into my own um, um, com comfortable, like in my own comfortable space where mm -hmm. I can just kind of act like no one is watching or like someone is watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because essentially that's eventually what it is. What it but, is, yeah. Um, you know, but I, and when I and when I do that, and when I'm in that space, I'm, I'm actually not acting though. I'm kind of letting the veil down, um, and and aligning the characters' uh, motives and in mm -hmm. and who that person is to come to me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, in, as far as getting in the character or doing different things like that, after you have done the work, which is the re the research and yeah. the character background, the script analysis, and understanding the things that you're given from. The production or the mm. writer, you know, and in the in the and then you take from that, and then you're able to. It's, it's a collaborative effort. So as artists, we're able to join one union and and, and make a beautiful baby at the end of the day. I you love know? that. So I, I kind of mm. go into uh, you take the words or the script, and you, you kind of just go into a space where you can, like I said, just be free mm -hmm. and play, mm -hmm. and, and 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 you have to be able to justify everything. Every word in that script that that mm. character is going through and justify it and not judge that character right. for what they're doing because that character is you. Yeah, you and have so to you embody. have to justify what make, why does it make sense to you mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. why you would do that and, and, why does, and how does it make sense in the grand scheme of the whole story. Mm -hmm. So when no, you do that. that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. So you said something earlier about it's about it's deeper than the lines. Yes. You have to get in, do your research, and embody what the character is supposed to be portraying to make it believable. Yes. What would you say is the most difficult part about being an actor? I ask that because, and I'm glad you broke it down the way that you did, because oftentimes people look at the glitz and the glam, mm -hmm. the end result, but nobody ever really sees the process. Right. So talk to me about that. Um, well, for, for one, uh, like you said, they see the glitz and glam, you mm -hmm. see the ending product. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that the auditioning is really the work. That's that's really what you're doing. You're trying to, you know, master these auditions so that you you can get the role, mm. right? And, and and then when you do get the role, then make make something beautiful out of that. Right. Um, but um, I, I I think to to get in more specific with your with your question um, and going deeper, I think that I think that going deeper. Is is you know a challenge? Yeah, um, of course. And, and being able to 
Because you're pushing yourself outside your comfort zone at yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 being, and being comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. And being comfortable with going all the way, being comfortable with being vulnerable, um, and being able to emote. And sometimes knowing that it's not going to be there. You're not mm -hmm. going to... Like I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, happy, and excited to be here today. I, I'm, I'm grateful for this moment. Amen. Right? Me too. And so this energy exchange is is amazing because that's this moment that we're living in, and that's what it's supposed to be. But sometimes I'm, maybe before I came here, I might have didn't have that had the worst thing yeah. happen, and I'm not in that space. But I got to go to work today. Absolutely. And so you have to push through that. You Absolutely. Know, and you have to make sure that you. You know, just put yourself I absolutely love that. in a space where you can do it. Yeah, regardless. no, it's the energy for me. It's it's magnetic. So I'm I'm drawn to the energy for sure. So tell everybody what your social media handles are. But before you do that, mm -hmm. give me Nurse Brian and tell everybody where they can watch Double Cross. Okay. Uh, here we go. Um, you can find Nurse Brian at Faith underscore Milante on all of the all the social media platforms. And uh, again, Double Cross is on Amazon Prime, All Black, um, YouTube TV, We TV, Roku TV, Fire TV, Fire Stick, however you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Absolutely Stream it live. love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank I want to thank me. all of my guests Faith Milante, Duck Lassiter, Miss Keisha from the Mad Print Shop. And I want to thank everyone who continues to follow me and support me. You guys have been a great audience, both in-house and via online. You guys, thank you and have a great night. <laughs>